my, um, I'm wondering if you think there's a, a shift in terms of the way that uh, sports media and specifically internet culture uh, thinks of college athletics today. I think of a book like uh, The Last Amateurs by John Feinstein. That's a book that came out about 20 years ago. And for those of you who don't know, it's a book where uh, this Washington Post writer basically follows the, uh, the men's basketball teams in the Patriot League. And it's a league that doesn't offer athletic scholarships. They're all there on academic scholarships. The idea is that they play for the love of the game, and they are truly sort of the last amateurs, and they are the outliers in college athletics. But it seems to me that therein lies the point. They're the outliers, and that's not how most college athletics are. And I think about if something like The Last Amateurs came out in 2013, that the internet we just rip it to shreds for all of the flaws that it has. I'm wondering if you think there is a significant generational change uh, in media and with internet culture in terms of the problems with college athletics today. You know, I've wondered that because I don't, I can't tell, like Taylor Branch in his, you know, story of the Atlantic, I thought was very interesting is that he said he had never considered um, the problems with the athletic system until he really started looking into it. There's a gentleman here whose uh, name is Bob Orr. Bob was a former Supreme Court, a former justice of the Supreme Court of the state of North Carolina. And he became interested in the NCAA after UNC had all their drama, and then he started looking in, and he came to find out how few rights that the players had, and it's now become his cause. He's really into that. He uh, does pro bono work on behalf of Shabazz Muhammad, for example. He was representing him in that case. And every time I saw it, I would wonder, I was like, oh my goodness, like, you guys did really never consider this until now? Like, this had never, ever crossed your mind? And I can't quite figure out if that's what it was or exactly how this goes, because I do feel that with the internet that there's a great change in at least a more palpable feeling that there's opposition to the status quo. I think we see more of that, and I think we see more of it on the ground. And it is starting to trickle more, I think, into the mainstream press and the things that they ultimately say. The tricky part is, as soon as the violation stuff comes up, the old guard pops up right fast because they're so conditioned to have problems with that. But what I want to see is this internet generation that has these issues with the current system. My guess is that a lot of them are in their 20s, maybe early 30s. Those people tend to just fall, by, fall in line behind those sorts of causes until they get grown. And then their voting patterns change, the things they're worried about change, and everything else. So I do think that there's a bit of a change, but I wonder if those that I feel have changed will remain changed as they get older. 